Hello, hit the camera. Hi everybody, it's me, Agnes Friedlander. Tonight we're gonna to be painting another lavender study. We're gonna be painting this woman in the white dress. In this reference photo, she looks like her head's being cut off. So I changed the design just a little bit. I used my artistic license, which you are allowed to do. So hello, hello. You can call me Aggie. Um, I'm with um, Agnes Friedlander Art Studio. I'm an artist. I teach how to paint. I teach how to add glass and resin to your paintings. And it's so much fun. So thank you for joining me. If it's your first time here, let me know where you're watching from. I would love to know and how you heard about me. And if you're watching on replay, um, throw that in the comments, say replay and tell me how your day was. Hi, Shelly. My, my good friend, my best biz buddy, Shelly Parker Design is here and she assists me in my membership. If you can't find a tracer or something, Shelly is like the Sherlock Holmes of tracer finders. Never called you that before, sorry. <laughs> I get silly when I'm live. Hello, Christina, new photo, oh, I love that. That is a gorgeous photo, how are you doing, girl? And of course, Teresa is here um, saying hi to Shelly and saying hi to me. Hi, Teresa, so glad you're here. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're doing this lady in the white dress and we know that white is never white, right? Hi, Diana. Thanks for joining us. White is never white. It can be any color. It reflects what is around it. So I just went crazy and made the whole background lavender, you know. Um, I kind of went for this pinkish, the pale pinky purple color that you see. Doesn't show up quite as nice on my camera here, but you can go grab this tracer, um, this whole PDF packet from my link tree. Let me get that for you and share it right here. Oh, actually, I think I just did that, didn't I? No, I didn't, here, I copied it. Maybe I didn't paste it. Yes, here is my link tree. And if you go um, click on that link, it'll take you to my link tree. And I have, um, it might, it's not the top one because I've added a, a couple more links um, since then, but there is a link for you to click on. I think it takes you to, actually, I don't, actually, Linktree lets you upload a PDF now. So that's the coolest thing. I love Linktree. <laughs> um, so yeah, I posted it right to the Linktree and somehow or another, it lets you download it and, you know, totally, totally awesome, right? So we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to show you what I've got. I'm going to remove myself from the screen so that we have a wider view of my desk in front of me. <sighs> this is going to be nice to just relax and paint. I was running around all day and um, shopping, finding some cool things and having fun. Um, let me just show you real quick. I did resin the, the lady in black, the black dress that we did last week. Let me um, turn this light off for a second. <laughs> so it's not such a crazy reflection. So here she is. She turned out really nice. And then here is um, another one that I resin. I had extra resin left over when I was resining some projects. So I threw the resin on this one and that one and uh, just turned out really, really nice, really enhanced the colors. And I am so happy with these two little paintings. So you too could have this whole series of paintings. There was one more, um, let me grab that one. This one is also an eight by 10. Um, this is the one that we did the first week. You can do these in watercolor or acrylics. And um, I hope you do them. I hope you join my free group. The, it's called um, the Glass and Resin Art Community on Facebook. Um, you can request to join that group. <clears throat> and Shelly, would, would you mind sharing that link? I don't think I have that. Um, and you can share your paintings in there if you would like. Thanks, Shelly. Shelly says she turned out amazing. All right, so when I made this, this is called a ground color. Um, it kind of helps you get, kind of, it helps you get the work done a little bit quicker having this main color and it acts as a mother color. Have you guys ever heard of that term? 
So it's going to harmonize all the colors on there. It looks much pinker in person than it does on camera for some reason. <laughs> it's a it's a very pale pinky purple, okay, which I made with my quinacridone magenta, which I've got right here, and my phthalo blue green shade. Both of these, I'm using golden fluid acrylics. You can use whatever you have though, okay, but you, you want a magenta and you want a blue that leans towards green, not a blue leaning towards red. Um, so that's that one. And then I've got raw sienna. You could also use yellow ochre if that's what you have. And then I've got yellow. You could use primary yellow, um, cad yellow light or cad yellow medium. And then I've got pyrrole red. Of course, you could use naphthol red or cad red, whatever warm red that you have. Um, this is sap green. You can't really tell, but it is. And this is um, a brown. You could use any brown, burnt sienna, burnt umber. And this is my purple. What is it called again? This one's called permanent violet dark. Um, you can make that yourself if you don't have it. It's just it's just a darker version of the purple. Um, and to make it darker, you would just add more blue to it. And then I've got two squirts of white. Um, I don't know that I'm going to need any black, um, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to start. Um, it doesn't look right. Oh, 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 let me. <laughs> I don't even see it. Let me see if I can grab it. I'm sorry, Shelly. She's out walking her doggies. All right, let's see. I'll go to Facebook and I'll look up the group. It's called Glass and Resin Art Community. StreamYard doesn't like it when I launch Facebook supposedly, but maybe it'll let me do this. Here it is. Okay, got it. Here we go. Hey, Jean. Okay, so there you go. If you'd like to join my free group, there you go. That's the link. We'd love to have you. Okay, so I'm going to start with the sky and I'm going to use, um, I don't know, I've got this. I think these are called shaders when they've got a short, you know, any, doesn't really matter what you use for this, but generally if you're doing a large area, a flat works nicely. If you're doing clouds, you would use a round brush. Anytime you're painting something round, you should use a round brush. I, ha I had to be told that, <laughs> believe it or not. I Somehow my brain didn't, didn't just automatically um, know that. So, it, I mean, you know, every little thing helps, right? <laughs> I was watching, uh, uh, I think it was Art Sherpa that said that one time when I was watching her. I'm like, oh, that totally makes sense. Um, okay. So if you, you can use the printout as a reference, but honestly, if you can look at it digitally, it's, you're better off. So I'm gonna grab some white and a tiny bit of the blue. I do wanna dull that down a tiny bit. So I'm actually just gonna grab a skosh <laughs> of the raw sienna and, and that'll help gray it just a little bit. That might be too gray. So we'll probably just mix up different um, different amounts of this on the fly. Um, it's definitely a little lighter and maybe a little grayer at the bottom. So, oh, grabbed way too much of the yellow. Uh, and that's gonna happen. Um, Wow, that actually might really work in her hat. It's not bad for her hat. Okay, let me get a napkin. I'm trying to paint the sky in. <laughs> and you know, sometimes that, that's gonna happen. You just grab a little bit too much and you know, okay, no big deal, just um, mix some more. Go at it again. So be careful of your brush strokes. Like I painted around her shoulder, but then I need to go back in and um, make all my brush strokes horizontal. 
And I kind of like how the purple is peeking through just a bit. Try to refrain from being a Miss Perfect blender. <laughs> how many Miss Perfect blenders do I have here tonight? I don't know why we think we have to perfectly blend everything. It's not necessary. In fact, it's actually better if you don't because then the viewer can kind of see um, how you did what you did and they feel a little bit more a part of, of your process, having that little inside glimpse of how you did that. You know, you ever think of that? A little bit lighter down here. A little bit bluer back in here. I wouldn't mind getting just a little bit of lavender in there. If I get some lavender in there and then go back over where this yellow was, I'll make an, a gray. Well, I guess I need a little more lavender. It'll be just a just a tish, just a hint grayish, which I think I kind of want a little bit of gray in the sky. And you know, just don't overwork it. Just trying to get this last little bit in here. Sometimes you have to kind of paint through um, an area. So I'm pulling it through to the other side because that's gonna help our brain understand that that's all one continuous sky back there. I want just a bit more white right at the horizon for that little pop. I, there's this election coming up and I'm just so tired of hearing all the commercials. I've got my um, um, iPad playing, my, I mean, my AirPods playing. It just, I love listening to music, you know, while I paint. Okay, I'm overdoing it and stop. Just wanna blend this just a tiny bit more. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull this over to the side that I don't have to remix all those colors later. Actually, I'm mixing them right now anyway. <laughs> oh, got a little heavy handed again. So let's make it a little grayer up here. Just kind of walk in that color. It actually looks green. So I'll make it a little bluer. This is the drudgery part. It's not the fun part doing the sides. But you know, you gotta do it. So I'm using a gallery depth frame for this one, or canvas for this one <laughs> frame. And if you didn't know, I uh, launched my new class. We are doing a, um, a rooster. Oops, sorry. Hitting the camera and everything. 
So I'm excited about that one. Had a couple of new people sign up, which is always fun. It's like, yes, it was worth all the time it took to put this listing up there on my website. Yay. Okay, that's probably, probably pretty good, right? Maybe, maybe just a little bluer on the top. So now my paint's starting to dry just a little bit. Oops, and it really grabbed way too much just then. Because it you do want to have your sky just a little a wee bit, as my grandmother used to say, a wee bit darker at the top. And I kind of like how there's a hint of green, there's hints of purple and all that. Hi, this is Andrew. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> um, Michelle says she's getting better at not being so blendy. Yeah, and I mean, we can go back in and, and revise that if you want. If you're nervous about losing your lines, you can, you know, come back in put that line back in there, you know, anything that you feel like you kind of lost. You can put back in, where is the top of this hat? Like this. Okay, so we didn't lose it. She's still there. All right, so now I'm gonna work my way forward. I'm gonna do the background first. Since she's in front, we need to do the background first. And I would do what's underneath all the flowers first. So the very bottom would be the ground, okay? The ground that she's walking on. And so that's, um, oh, you know what? I forgot one line right here. Let's add that in. So it kind of comes out from her calf and kind of goes to here maybe, something like this. So this strip right here, <laughs> drop my pencil. Um, this is gonna go like this, this is gonna go like this, that. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring the line around on the side too. Okay. Cause that look, <clears throat> that'll look really nice when it's on a wall and you see all that from the side, right? Wouldn't that be cool? All right, so let's figure out what this color is. It's, it's a brown, you know, it's mostly brown. So we have that and it is very helpful to, to, to buy tubes of brown paint. Um, you know, there's burnt umber, there's um, burnt sienna, which is a little bit more red. This one is a, um, Burnt umber light. And I really do. I think I like burnt umber the best because it's it's a true brown. It's kind of neutral. So um, I'm going to add some white to this. And of course, I always pull from the edge of my puddle. And let's just see what this looks like when I just put a little bit of this on top of that purple. You know, just do a little taste testing. You know, you never know, it might be kind of close. Who knows, right? Yeah, I think it's not bad. Now, um, acrylic paint does dry a wee bit. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying we. Um, a wee bit um, darker than when it's wet. So, you might want to actually, you know, intentionally make it a little bit lighter. And I'm doing kind of horizontal-ish strokes. 
because that just kind of subliminally tells the subliminally that's a, not a hard not an easy word <laughs> tells the viewer that it is land believe it or not if you if you make horizontal strokes okay let's let's go a little bit darker it looks very red um, on mine and I don't think I want to do that. So it's going to look very um, kind of like obtrusive right now because there's nothing else going on. And we have to just kind of block it in there and, you know, deal with it. And we can decide later what we need to adjust, okay? You know, as we fill in more areas, it's definitely gonna get, you know, not, not seem so obtrusive, so important. Okay, so there's some brown, a hint of it over here, right? We don't see it anymore after that. Um, and then we see it in this one, it's in here. Okay, and then we're gonna see it here. This is inside the basket handle and in this area. So there are light areas and dark areas going across here. You want to paint into the, the lines, the flower areas, so that you can later cover that up. We're going to basically do the green stocky stems, and then we're going to do the, the purple flowers on top. Comment below if you have ever painted um, a lavender scene like this. It's, it feels pretty complicated, doesn't it? So I painted the side, this side. Okay. Um, now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Um, so I like using a liner brush. Yeah, I mean, you can see, you can feel kind of daunting doing something like this. And you, you just, yeah, it really is divide and conquer, <laughs> you know? Um, all right, so what I'm noticing is that the, the brown does continue up there and it's so small up there that I, I pretty much had to switch to a smaller brush. And you might be tempted to use your straight dark brown, but, but it is in the distance. So we don't wanna make it, you know, truly, truly dark because we want to have some atmospheric perspective. We want to have that sense of distance and things in the distance do get lighter, so. So there's some hints of upright kind of stalks here. 
So I'm going to start putting just a hint of that in. And that'll kind of lead the eye in also. And then I'm going to, I see some dark, you know, over here. It, it looks purple on mine. Maybe I'll add a little bit of purple to this. My purple is actually darker than my brown. It's a darker value. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. So it's like a brownish purple. Make it a little browner. Okay, and then we're going to continue it. We're like that. All right, now we can also do it on this row right next to her. And I noticed that there's, um, I don't know what color that is. Maybe that's a green. I'm going to grab some sap green. There's a really dark thing right here. And I like that because it's going to pull your eye over there. Might be just a few hints of green. Okay, so then let's come, let's do this row of browns, brown um, stocky things that we kind of see. So I'm doing vertical strokes, kind of vertical, kind of diagonal. I'm gonna make them a little bit lighter now because we want some variation. Always, always variation. These, this might get completely covered up with my green stalks that I'm gonna add. There's a hint of this right in between here. I'm being just a little bit more detail-y in here since it's the basket. And some kind of dry brush, um, I don't know, rifts in the little roadway riffs. I don't know, what, what do you call them? Softening this edge back here. That looks pretty good. So does that make sense what I'm doing? I'm doing these, these, these lines that look like the stems of the plants. And I'm just looking at the angle of them. I think it's real important to get the right angle. And I'm looking at where they begin and end. So I see, I see a lot right here. It needs to be darker. I might even make it just a little greenish too. So right here. Put some greens in a couple of other places on some of these other ones. And then let's go back to some brown. Okay, then there's brown on the ground, like in between the plants. So I have to get them in there now. So I'm just going to dot them in. I want I want these this mound of plant of lavender that's right here to point up to her. So I'm kind of picturing where those little stems are and putting this brown in the background for contrast so that we'll really see those. Of course this part would be a lot darker here. A 
darker there. And if you if you need a dark color, you can mix, you know, mix three of your darkest colors together, like purple, green, and brown, or purple, green, and blue, and you'll make a, a nice dark color. Like here's blue, purple, and green. And and basically that could be your black if you if you would need a truly, truly dark color. You know, like maybe I do want it to be kind of almost black right here by her heel because that's a shadow, maybe just a couple of really dark shadows right here, since this is kind of our focal point. And so anytime you really want to bring attention to an area, you want, the, you want contrast, you want um, nice dark, dark. Uh, it's the main thing that my instructors told me in art school, make your darks darker. Like, really? That's all you got to say to me? Yep. <laughs> so I put that in to give myself an idea of how dark that needs to be, and it's going to help me. You know, maybe over here. This is actually just a little darker here in a couple places, too. You know, maybe maybe even over here, there's just a couple of hints of really dark, just sprinkled throughout to kind of lead the viewer around. Okay, now I'm gonna make this dark color a little bit more brownish. And it, it might just have too much of my phthalo blue in it to cooperate. Thalo blue is very, very powerful, really takes over. So just need more brown on my palette. Hey, Carlotta, how are you? Hey, Lynn. Angela, I've never painted a lavender scene. And yes, I would never know to tackle it on my own. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the hardest one out of all of them, which is why I saved it for last. <laughs> All right, let's just paint around her foot, shall we? You can actually even see a hint of a shadow here. You can see I have a little bit of green in there, but I don't think I mind that too much. So now I'm just going squiggly back and forth, softening, filling it in. You know, when you come across, stumble across a color that really seems to work, um, you'll know it and just kind of go for it and plug it in there a little bit more. Mixing up more brown in here. I think I do need this darker. Okay, so now I need a bigger brush. You know, we have to do all this groundwork. Ha, <laughs> groundwork, oh, I made a pun. 
um, <laughs> to uh, I'm gonna put a hint of quinacridone in this, maybe even a hint of this red. Warm this up just a little bit. See what that looks like. Yeah, I like it a little bit warmer. <clears throat> so let me bring that around the sides. And let me pull some of this dark down over here. Okay, so I've got something blocked in there. Let's see. Let's let's go let's go a little bit further now and add some other colors in and see how it affects this. So um, we want to get some greens in here, right? Greens are very important. Um, they're earthy greens. So sap sap green helps get you ahead but I like making it even warmer. You know, yellow is, is warm, one of the warmest colors. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white to lighten my sap, but that cools it. So I add the yellow to warm it back up again. And you know, the first green that you mix, it's always a kind of a crap shoot. I would say just, you know, mix one up, throw it in there and see how it looks. And you, you have to think about this subject in terms of mounds. <laughs> These are mounds. So um, we're going to put blobs to represent our mounds. And the mounds kind of, um, here's, here's how I want you to think of them when you're painting them. I'll get my sketchbook here. You know, let's talk about what we're actually looking at. We are looking at a row of plants in perspective. And, you know, basically it's a bundle. You know, it's probably a bunch of earth. Here's the roots. It is a complicated set of stems forming this ball, right? And these would be all of the flowers on the top of all these stems, you know? So it makes an arc like this. So when they're in a row, you wanna think of them in terms of being like this. So in the distance, what happens is, you know, so here's, I can see some stems here. The next mound is like this, see some stems here. I only see the stems in certain places, right? Like I, I, maybe I shouldn't be calling them stems, but you know what I'm talking about, right? So you wanna see this and this, you wanna see a little bit of this like this. So when you paint it, the green is underneath, right? Might be hints of it here and there, right? And then we're gonna paint the purple in. Now that's the reason why I have purple on my background to help me out uh, that I don't have to paint all of that, right? But um, so if this were all with my purple background like I've got, a lot of the work is done for me having that purple background, right? So let's put that in. <laughs> let's put a purple background in. Right, this is all purple. Okay. 
This is all purple. All purple. See how it's already starting to look like mounds just because of my brush strokes? These blobby brush strokes. And then what I would do with a liner brush, go in with the detail. You know, first you have to think in terms of mass, and then you can think in terms of detail. So when I look at the detail of this, I see, I do see lines. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get some of those lines in there, here and there. Some of those lines are gonna go up into, um, into the um, purple area. Right? Okay, first you have to have some green. Now you can add the purple. And there's like probably, I mean, how many shades of purple do you see? I mean, some of them look white, but basically you're gonna, that's the fun part. I love dotting. So you're gonna kind of dot, dot this stuff on there. Oops, God, I grabbed way too much. It's, it's a lot more pink than you think these purples. So with a, you know, smaller brush and it's gonna be slightly pinker than your background which I don't think I've done a very good job of. Then you can add these dots and it's blending in too much on top of that in, in a line, kind of in a line. All right, let's, let's make a slightly different color so we can see it. Some of them do look really, really pink. Let me see if I can get some of that. And I mean, you could have a lot of fun with all these little dots and stuff. So see, you're just gonna, you're just gonna dot those in there like that. Look for any masses of green that you can keep, you know, um, try to put them in, in lines together, the lavender, you know, without driving yourself too crazy, <laughs> right? And then you'd come back in with a lighter, whitish one. But you have to kind of get to where you're just quickly dotting them or you'll you'll be here forever. So that's the strategy on how I'm gonna do them, okay? When I look at them, sometimes I see a darker purple underneath. So maybe that would be the first um, dotting color to put on. Okay, so let's do that. Did this help? Let me know in the comments if it helped. Okay. I mean, this is a this is an advanced painting for sure. It is. I may not even finish it tonight. You know, who knows? <sighs> okay. Okay, good, Carlotta. Thanks for. And you know, the other thing you could do, you could chalk some of these in. Let me get some chalk, my white school chalk. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to look at my reference image and I'm going to kind of squint down at it and 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 decide where do I see these mounds? Okay, here's one, here's one. You know, where do I really see some arcs? You know, these moundy arcs. Where do I see them? The one right here. It's a really strong one, kind of lined up with her dress here, right? Another one right here. You know, and you could even put some of these lines in here like this to help you. Maybe that's gonna, you know, just assist you in some way. There's another arc here. Like here's a mass of green. I see another mass of green right here. 
So wherever I can put those little mounds like that, those little arcs, that's going to help me. Hope you can see them. Okay, so now, yes, practicing on a sketch pad. Oh, Shelly, you're so good. You always say it's a great tip to try out the shapes on a sketch pad. Yes. Do you guys do that? Do you guys have a sketch pad? Okay. Um, I want to work on these, what I see way in the distance there. I mean, it's pretty much just the pale purple. I don't know that I really need to do a whole lot. Um, but what's funny when I look at it, I see a hint of more pink. I don't know. Let's but it's very, very light. So the hard part is gonna be getting the exact value of that, of that pale pink. All right, let's see if this is it, might not be. And since these are so far away, I'm literally going to um, paint arcs. Okay. Every stroke I do is an arc. And it's okay to leave some of your, you know, some of your purple showing. I'm going to use a slightly, ever so slightly darker version of that. Yeah, that's helping. So, I mean, at some point, I'm going to start putting in more detail arcs and mounds but these are so far away you really wouldn't be able to totally make them out okay now there's also green if you really look at these and again if you look at it digitally i know you're not going to see it very well on my screen from a printed version of this, but I supplied the image in the uh, packet. And you can go get these direct from Unsplash if you'd like. And if you look at the image digitally on your phone or iPad or screen, you'll see this much, much better. And I do see little um, arcs of pale green, like a sage green. So I'm gonna add that in now. So I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna start with white. I don't mind that I've got the pink on my um, brush. And I'm going to add green. And that's going to give me automatically a nice muted green. It might not look real green on here, but it'll probably look a lot greener when you go to put it on your painting. And I'm just going to throw those in there. And again, I'm going to try and paint those in as an arc. Same thing on this side, little arcs in between the pink. And leave some purple. It's totally, totally fine to leave some of that purple background. Okay, now I know it doesn't look quite like it yet, but you know, you gotta, we're working our way there. Um, let's see. I think I want it to be just a slightly cooler green also. So I'm gonna grab some of my blue, some of my um, 
phthalo blue green shade and add that in there. Maybe that's a little too cool, a little more green. So now I've got this cooler green. And I just wanna see how that looks. I want it a little bit lighter. So that looks more sagey to me. In the distance, it just needed to look a little cooler. I mean, they almost just become little dots. Okay. Yeah, I like what that did. All right, so now I'm ready to start throwing. I like this sagey green. And I'm gonna start throwing that in here. I think I need another arc or two. So I'm taking that sagey green color and painting these kind of um, you know vertical-ish strokes. And your your direction is very important that you do these as um, lines coming out of that center bundle. P picture them being bundles, you know, that are kind of grouped in the center, that center ball that I showed you. Okay, I need a little bit more of this color. You know, and over here, it's, it's more green. So I'm just working in all of these little stems here and there. Painting the sides a little bit simpler. Okay. Let me get a sip of water here.
All right, I can see that I need some darker greens in here. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to kind of um, kind of lean back and look at the whole thing and see what you might need to do. So I'm holding my brush a little bit looser now and just thinking about filling in more of these stocky, stammy things. Holding my brush in the middle like this. That's how you get these nice strokes. Right, these are kind of going like this. Okay, so now I'll wait a few more on this side. Okay. Yeah, I, I love that too, bringing it around the side. It is a bit more work, but I think it really makes a big difference. All right. Um, I want to put the darker purple in some places now. So um, let me get this blue and cornacridone magenta mixed together. So you see how this is a much bluer violet, right? My paint's starting to get a little bit sticky. And of course we see some in her basket here. Just wanna have some of that there. You see like I don't know, I see hints of it over here along the sides. So since I see it, I'm gonna put it in. Now those are just dots because they're real, real far away. Um, if you do see some purple way in the distance, I would say you gotta make it a lot lighter than you think. Let me get some more white. because you need that atmospheric perspective. You need to make it lighter because things are lighter the further away they are. So here, I mean, it takes a lot of white to lighten this up, but um, I do wanna have, you know, some hints of this, maybe cover up some of my pencil lines. And again, you know, this is just very abstract in the distance which it's fun for your viewer to look at. I really enjoy looking when, when an artist is confident enough 
to leave some areas of a painting abstract for me. I love looking at that part, don't you? Think, think about it when you've looked at other people's paintings. It's fun to see how they handled, <laughs> you know, the abstract part. It's like, oh, wow. I, I wouldn't have even thought it would be okay to do that. But look, it is okay. It worked. You know, I love discovering that. All right, so I'm squinting down and looking for all the places where I can put um, these purples. There's some dark purple. And, you know, maybe this dark that I put in before was too dark. So I'm going to put these darks next to it to kind of camouflage them. And they look really good when you do that. It's nice to have that really dark in there. I kind of like that. So you have to put those darks in at the beginning. If you don't, you're going to wish that you had, you know. So now that I see how cool that looks, I kind of want some more of them. So what was that color? I think I used like blue and green and the and the magenta, right? I could use this purple too. Yeah, so this is super dark. And I mean, I see bits of it here too. Hold your brush loosely and just go for it. It's gonna look really cool, I promise. Don't be afraid to get a little bold. You know, look for places, where do you see this color? Where can you just do a little pop of it? The nice thing about this painting is it's dotty and you can paint over your dots, <laughs> you know, um, with more dots of a lighter color. Now this is cool, putting a few strokes like that. I like what that's doing. Okay, I need to be careful not to go too crazy with this. But I kind of need to continue putting some of these darks down here. Okay. All right, all right, all right. In the basket, well, I don't really need to do that. Okay. Um, all right, I, let me spray my paint a little bit. I really do see a pretty pinky color. This might be too. No, that I went a little too dark. Maybe like this. You know, I don't know for sure that this is right, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. So I'm putting these around where I have the stocky stems. I'm probably gonna need to add more, you know, stocky stems in. But that's starting to look like it, right?
you know, and honestly, you back here, you could even get to where you're using a nail dotter, you know. That's fun. I am having a lot of fun with this one. Let me turn the light off. Yeah. All right. Um, I think it would be safer if I have more green filled in. Just a little bit more green I think I need. Maybe even a little bit of yellow. Have this a little bit lighter. Okay. I still have you guys here. I don't see any comments. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get some more pink in. Getting more white again. You know, and look back at your reference. Don't just um, put in what you think is there. I was I was starting to put too many dark pink. There's not a lot of the darker pink in the foreground. Sylvia, you are here. How are you doing, my friend?
kind of improvising and making these bigger. Making it a lot more abstract on the sides. <laughs> So I have to really cover up the edges of my dark, um, my dark purples. So I'm basically dotting around them with, you know, the, a lighter, a lighter version. So you want to completely hide those purple, the really dark blobs. <laughs> Hi, Jane. How are you? Okay, so now on this side, we can kind of mask them in a bit more with larger arcing blobs, if you will. So yeah, this is a very light Again, remember the arc shape. rethinking this might be a little too dark over there. Okay. Whew. All right. So that's um, a decent amount of blocking in. Doing them much, much looser on the sides here.
right? Much, much looser. Okay, so now let's get her skin tone in there. So for skin tone, um, skin tone is basically peach. So you want a yellow and a red or a yellow and a pink and white. So I'm going to mix these together. And I mean, she is kind of in shadow. This is probably going to be too bright. Actually, she's got she's got skin showing on her shoulder. I don't think I noticed that before. So what you notice about her foot, her left foot, is um, the top of her foot is lighter and the little side of her calf is darker. So we're gonna use some of our brown and create a, a shadow color. Apparently I got some green in there. And kind of shade her calf. both sides of it. And you know, this whole, the whole thing can be kind of muted because it's in shadow. And the bottom of her heel is dirty. The arch of her foot is really light. So I want to add a little bit of white. And just kind of blend that a little bit. The top of her heel, this is hitting the light, or the light is hitting her heel, so I'm making that lighter. And then I just kind of need to soften this just a little bit. So wipe your brush off anytime you want to soften. A little bit wet. Just need a little bit of shadow on there. And this top of her foot is a lot lighter right there. Side of her foot is darker. Let's 
blend this. Soften this line. Just kind of need to pull this dark shadow down and form the little ankle bone. It's very important to have this ankle bone showing right there or it's just not gonna be believable at all. And then we need to really push that, um, the background back a little bit. And it's, it needs to be a slightly different brown. So I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to it because it, it does look a little more purplish in the background. Maybe a little bit lighter. Here's a few light spots. Nope, my paint wasn't mixed enough. Continue it on the other side or it won't look believable. I think I have it just a little too dark, but I think that helped a lot. I'm adding a little um, raw sienna to it also now. And this purplish color helps harmonize the whole thing. Don't think I'm gonna worry about her foot too much more than that. Okay, now let's get that white dress in there, right? But white is never white. So what color do we want to make it? Um, oh, I totally lost my skin tone. Oh no, here's my skin tone. Um, going to knock her shoulder back a little bit. Add a little bit of green to it to subdue it a little bit. Now I need a ton of white. Because she's just way too peachy. Okay, um, well, I see a very similar color 
in the band of her hat. Okay. And so that's a slightly darker, so, so her, her fingers, oh, did I pick a, her fingers are um, pointing downward. So you just want them a little, you want a hint of them being a little bit of a different shade. If you can do that, that's not showing up very well on my camera. Okay. Oh, this looks a little sharp. I need to probably do a little bit more to that, but I want to I want to get her white dress in there first. Um, and it would probably be a violet looking dress, actually. Well, so let's see what it looks like if we if we make it, you know, really kind of violet. I do see more pink, like a pink streak right here. And I definitely see pink, um, a pinky shadowy color up here. So let's get that shadow in there and also a shadow for her arm. And maybe on this sleeve to separate it from that other plane. I think I'm gonna get rid of the shoulder being flesh color. It's probably just too confusing. So I'm just kind of blending in pinks and purples here to see what I like, I guess. We're just basically looking at the major values. You know, and remember, you can you can use your artistic license. You don't have to do exactly what you see. Too much paint on my brush.
probably would be a little bit lighter, you know, at the top here. Okay, I think I want this to be lighter. And her dress is um, on her calf. So there would definitely be, this would definitely be lighter right here. The light hitting that. And we're just trying to get a little bit of that curve, like a bell shape. So I'm going to go back to my bluish purple. I do see a little bit of a shadowy tone here. I think I want it over here too. You know, and you have to make that go behind that basket. All right. You need a little bit of this on this sleeve because it looks too different. <laughs> it's a little. Yeah, that's better. A little bit of this purple in here, maybe. We could put the ribbon back on in a minute. Okay. Oops, sorry. We really tilted there. I think that's I think that's getting that feeling of light on there pretty good. And I really do feel like her feet look like they're under her dress. I think I just need to, you know, work a little bit more on that shadow area, which I'm probably going to end pretty soon because we've done a lot. But what you want to do is kind of get everything blocked in. I think I do want to have this somewhat peachy hat. Um, it's like a really pale peachy hat she's wearing. So let's get that in here. Maybe it should be a little pinker. Whoa. All right. I went crazy with my quinacridone. This might be pretty good. So I'm just going to block in this hat.
Yeah, this is a good color. I really like that. Okay, let's get this top of the head in there. Oh, I love the pinkish outline on it. Oh, it is so pretty. Okay. I'm going to make this um, bow just a little bit brighter. Okay, and then I think it needs a bit of a highlight on it. I was seeing more yellow until you said peach. Yeah, I just thought peach would look nicer. And then of course we could put peach in into the painting too, maybe in the in the ground a little bit, you know. Um this part right here is really bugging me. I might put just a little oh. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Oh <laughs> little peach on her foot. Um, yeah, this is such a weird color on my on my print that I don't know what the heck it is. But okay, let me get the white basket in too. Which really I shouldn't make it white, I should make it a very pale lavender, right? Actually, I, it is pale lavender, so I'm just gonna paint little dots on it and paint a handle on.
Okay, and then what's in the basket? We don't see any green in that basket, it's just kind of weird. But I don't know, I think I think there should be just a little bit of green. Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna put the, you know, it's a lot of pinks in there. <clears throat> These are a slightly different pink, um, but I'm liking it. Uh, hi, Linda. This is a size four script liner brush. I probably should be using something just a little smaller. Okay, now I want a brighter pink now. All right. It's really weird too. If you really look at the reference, there's some kind of dark, maybe she's got dark hair. <laughs> there's a little hint of a dark line right there. Isn't that funny? But I left that out because you can't see enough of it to really put it in there. So I think I'm going to call it a night right now on, on this. Well, let me do one highlight on her hat. It just needs we need to kind of separate um, one plane. Let's do this. I think my reference image got something uh, on the on my printout. paint's drying up on me. I 
think I'm getting tired. And you know, sometimes if it starts getting to be too hard, <laughs> sometimes that means you're a little tired. Um, yeah, that really made her pop, didn't it? Wow. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I feel like these, I've got things that are a little too hard happening here. Here, let's pick it up and look at it from a different direction. Oh, and I, I, I still have to put that you know, a little detail thing in there. There's a, there's a lot left to do. So we'll finish it up next week. But let me, um, let me add myself back into the stream here. Hi, thank you so much for hanging with me. I still have seven of you here. Wow. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> it's not an easy one. It's a hard one. But look how different it looks when I hold it up this way. Isn't that funny? I'm sorry, it would be nice if I hold it up straight. Um, I really do like that feeling of light on the dress. And I really love the peach hat. Wow. Um, what's really jumping out at me is my dark that I used is very, it's very sharp. And I don't know that it's too dark, but I need to cover up more of it. Like it's starting to work down here where I've really covered up a lot of it. And then I think I just need more in-between tone. I really like this, this um, purple right here. <laughs> you know, this purple, purple right there. I think I need a little bit more of that. Um, and I like, I like how this worked out. Maybe this could be a little bit lighter. But, you know, we'll, this is too hard of a line right here. Way too hard. So we'll soften that up. This value is a little too dark. These dark blues in there, it's a little too dark. What do you see? Um, she's not as prominent as the flowers. The flowers are kind of really, which, which you know what? I mean, a woman in a white dress it's, it would be very hard to make her be the focal point. I don't think she needs to be. I think it is about the flowers. What do you think? I could bring her out a little bit more. Um, something to think about. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm going to add another one of these for um, next week. I think I've got paint on my forehead. And um, I'll be back at the same time, okay? And we'll finish this one up. Shadows on the skirt, let me see her leg. I love her feet. Yeah, the feet were hard. Um, the most important thing about the feet is this light part differentiating the front flat part of her foot from the side of her ankle. <laughs> yeah. I know, when I, when, I, when I chose this, I'm like, oh... People are going to freak out about the feet, <laughs> but it's not, they weren't, they're not that hard. They weren't that hard. Were they? I don't think so. It's the flowers that are time consuming, right? All right, friends, I will make another um, event, you know, another, um, what I do is I set it up in StreamYard. Oops, knocked into that. I set it up in StreamYard and I um, and it automatically makes a Facebook event. But um, we'll just continue. We'll finish this one up next week at the same time. So that would be uh, what's today? Oh, my brain is fried. Today is uh, hold on April third. So. April 10th, we'll be back, day after Easter, okay? <laughs> and if you've got um, any questions or comments or anything, just go ahead and put them in the comments there. Tag me if you would like, um, and I'm happy to help. All right, so see you next week. Bye-bye.